Okay, I've seen stuff you do on social media. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what this guy's doing. Other times I'm like, this guy's brilliant. Do those coaches, did Rob Cole ever sit you down and be like, Dylan, you gotta get off the social media? Yes. And, and what, what advice would you have Countless. for kids? Countless times. What, but you realize they throw most guys off teams for stuff like that. Cornell's a little different. He runs things, he runs a different ship, though, right? So, so, so I'm what's ex- your advice about social media and, and what would you say? Is there anything you'd change about it? Let me tell you something about done. social media, and I don't mean to rant. Like, well, I love to rant, I love to speak. It's not even rant, I don't like to hear myself talk. I love to engage in conversation. And with social media, let me speak a little bit of my piece. Like, I want to start a podcast and get into these issues. That's what I was going to ask you that. Next. All right, we'll go to that next. But go, but let's let, go to social, social media. media. I want to hear about that. Let me tell you something about social media. Get off it, to some extent, okay? You follow these people who make you feel like your life isn't great, okay? People who are Instagram models, all these fitness instructors, like, I don't want to say names, but these people don't have biology degrees. A lot of them don't. They don't have nutrition degrees. They're genetically gifted, and because they're appeasing aesthetically to the eye, we follow them. We give them glorification, you know? And they actually start to think we care about their supplements that are filled with caffeine and fillers that would make you feel the, fail a dopa test, right? And we follow these people. And we start to think that ourselves are less. Our lives are less. FOMO, right? These people, they lie on social media, number one. They Photoshop their photos. And then even, let's talk about ordinary people. They post pictures with their boyfriends or their girlfriends are cheating on. They post pictures of their lives or the car that's not theirs. They got money that they just, that's the money going to their mortgage. Don't believe social media, okay, to an extent. Don't believe it because it's exactly what people want you to see. It's this clear, sh- clear shut, clear shut vision of life that people want you to see. My life is so perfect. My life is so great. When in essence, it's really not, right? A lot of people do that. Now, why am I so avid on social media? Because number one, think of it like this: the concept of the scrapbook is disappearing. It's gone. The, the days are past where you're gonna go in your grandma's cupboard and find a scrapbook of you when you were little, like playing with your sister. Right? That's gone. Instagram, treat it like the new scrapbook. Document your life before it's too late, right? Life is precious. It's the new scrapbook. We're getting rid of them. Now it's on Instagram. One day you'll be 90, we'll be a generation, and it'll be so weird to interact with your grandkids, be like, look at my Instagram. And you can literally go back to the end, or the beginning, or whatever it was. You could show them important points in your life and what it meant to you with a caption. That's even deeper. You know, your grandparents' photos rarely had captions. They explained it to you, it's different. My social media, yes, I'm an idiot, but yes, I'm also deep. You know, I like to fool around, I like to have fun, but I also like to ask you about aliens or something like crazy. I feel like that's a gift. I have a gift, and I'm not being cocky, this is what people have told me, I have a gift to paint a picture, connect with people, get in touch with their emotions, speak for them, and live a life that they, they, they want to be a part of, they want to get used to, like, how are you in an Ivy League school yet you do all this crazy stuff? You're hanging out with, you know, crazy amount, you know, hanging out with girls, you're driving this crazy car, you don't have a license, allegedly. You're doing all this cool stuff, you got Yeezys on in every Snapchat, like you're making funny videos, what is it about you? Like, what is it? And I just be me. They say, what is the people's champ? The people's champ is everything the people can't be. So a lot of people are in a job, they're in a school, they can't, they, they feel like they can't curse. They feel like they gotta talk about God all the time, even though they're not that religious, they don't believe in it that much, because they feel like it's the right thing to do. They feel like they can't be themselves. I'm at a point where I have a distinct gift. I'm a ghetto boy. I'm gonna say that. Shout out to Chico, shout out to Marv Raganana, shout out to L40, Jacob Pinsky, Chris Horvath, Brett, all my boys back home, JT Forkin. He'll be out of Syracuse next year. He's another L40 athlete. These boys raised me. I didn't live on the street, but I learned lessons on the street. You know? The times I faced with Tom Hammer, they made me become a person who's seen that side, I've had friends die, OD, been in jail. And then I see people who are worth billions of dollars at Cornell, everything in between, I meet people. That's something, those conversations I have are conversations people don't get out in the middle of Northwest Ohio or Kentucky or Florida. Why do I think people are attracted to me after nationals, for example? Yeah, that, that would be a question I have for you. Yeah. How does the guy who takes six in the Nationals become the star of the NCAA tournament? I'm the star of the NCAA tournament because I keep it real. I don't hide who I am. I don't think it's all emotion. Emotion. Like, I'll tell you what. My Nationals did not end the way I wanted. Okay. But it kind of did. You know, at one point in my life, when I was a TC3, I just wanted to start for Cornell. And then I adjusted. I acclimated. Okay, I want to start. Okay, I want to win. I want to be an All-American. I want to be a national champ. 
Okay, was I robbed in that semifinal with some back points calls because some third party review completely in contradicts with confirmation bias of the ref? Completely. Do I think I'd be Joey Laval? 100%. Do I think he got lucky? 100%. No knock on Joey Laval. I gave it everything I have. And it showed the next day. The next day when I could barely walk. And I went out there and I got beat up by two kids. One kid I pinned, another kid from, we won't say where, who I would absolutely destroy. Both of them. Again, no knock to them. That's just me believing in me and where I'm from. I gave it everything I had. Every time I'd step between the lines. Any occasion. And in there, I deserve to be in the finals. And in my head, it's as if I was there. Which is really kind of sad. I believed I deserved it. But that's just life. You know, you don't really you don't learn to move on. It's kind of what you leave behind that affects you. And I'm coming to terms with that. I'm moving on. Because wrestling is just... It's not who I am. It's what I do. You know, like I said in that interview, the reason I does it is for the heart of it. For the heart of it. So I would have loved to have been in the finals. That ref robbed me, robbed me of not only my, of what I deserve, but he robbed me of a, a part of me. And I hope he watches this. He took a part of me that day. Okay? Granted, like, I shouldn't have got taken down in the end, but like, I could best stand up and like, it's a very way, rough weight cut, but it breaks my heart that he robbed me, but he robbed the people. Me versus North was what everybody wanted to see. It was the story. It was the two clash of the guys who were just hanging out there. I could have got pinned in a minute. Who knows? He could have checked me. I don't know. But everyone wanted to see what had happened.